Hello everybody, so we're hitting another service call. This is an air conditioner that is leaking. The, this, the evaporator is enclosed right here in the ceiling and we have the return right there. So we have to find out why the evaporator is leaking. It could be the tray or it could be uh, the unit itself or it could be frozen. So let's remove um, this cover. So this is my tray, my drain. Oh, uh, look at that the coils of the evaporator is starting uh, to be frozen. So uh, why do they freeze? It could be uh, like 10 different things. It could be an airflow problem and there's like five categories on that or it could be maybe it needs a little bit of, of refrigerant. So we're going to find out why he's doing that. So since we're here, uh, let's check. Uh, remember, one of the reasons why your uh, evaporator freezes uh, is because uh, one of the reasons is that it's uh, low on Freon. So since we are here in the uh, evaporator and the condenser is on the roof, uh, I'm going to take advantage of that and do that right now. So I have my Elitech um, electronic leak detector and it has high medium and low sensitivity so uh we're gonna go with medium sensitivity and we're gonna start yep. with that to see so uh i'm gonna go through all the coils to see if it catches something remember if there's a leak you have to repair it you cannot just add refrigerant uh, and this unit is uh refrigerant 22 so it's very expensive so you don't want to just add and and uh, look at this unit um we are on the roof and that's how i found it look at that disconnect is just hanging 240 volts just hanging there very very dangerous so we're going to replace that and i can see through there to see if i see oil and it seems clean but i want to open it up in a few minutes anyway so now we're going to check um, the condenser coil we want to make sure there's no leaks in this coil so for that we have to remove our fan it is about four screws and then lift it and then you set it on the side make sure the wires uh, you don't break the wires and i'm going to turn my infrared leak detector and I'm gonna go through all the loops of the coil make sure that you take your time and uh, spend a couple seconds on each coil go up and down and then uh, go through all the liquid line all the suction line uh, out of the compressor every connection you might see because we have to rule out the condenser so it seems like we are okay there's no traces of oil so now let's 99% um, of my leaks in this property comes from the valves from the core valves faulty core valves so I'm gonna open them up and then I'm gonna test it uh, right now I'm removing um, the uh, suction line cap and now we're gonna do a test with the leak detector uh, you have to wait for 30 seconds until it warms up and look at that this is a leaker 100% 100% leaking so um, we have to replace the core and now we're gonna test our liquid light let's see this one look at that both valves are leaking so that's um, uh, we're going to put our gauges in a few minutes to see how much refrigerant we have left. Uh, good thing we don't have to replace any coils. It's just these two core valves. And I'm going to show you how. I just replaced the service disconnect. Let me show you what I did. 240 volts coming from the apartment, from the house. And it is uh, the white and the blue. And that's the line line one and line two 120 and 120 that's 240 and then this this one goes to the contactor over here so that's the load part so it's gonna be 
this one and this one the one on the right and the one on the left so that's the load you have to pay attention each disconnect is different so you just have to follow the instructions line and load line means where the power comes from and load is what's going to serve which is the load which is the uh, contactor so that's it so we're gonna we know that these two cores are leaking so we're going to replace them so we're going to remove the cap and this is one of my favorite tools this is the Appion core valve removal tool so this is a valve here and this is the one that removes the core so I'm gonna show you how to use it so I'm gonna put it on this side there you go and now this thing is going to remove the core valve so we're gonna push it in this part we're gonna push it and we're gonna turn and as you could see here it's going apart so hopefully we have the core valve there and now we're gonna pull it out we're gonna close this valve and then we're gonna see if we have the core valve so this is the core this is the one it's been leaking and if you see there it looks like there's some wear, wear and tear so we're gonna get rid of these and we're gonna put a new one I'm gonna put it just like that so this is the new one we're gonna insert it right here then you're gonna close this so it seals everything okay once it's sealed we're gonna open this up and we're gonna push it and then we're gonna screw it back press on this knob and then screw clockwise and it feels tight now so now I'm gonna uh, open this up and I don't have the core valve I don't have the core here so if there was if it didn't sit properly the the uh, refrigerant come out from here so it seems like we got it we're gonna remove it and there's no noise nothing that means we got it so we successfully remove uh, remove the core and replace it with a new one so we're gonna do the same one with this one and that's it we replaced both cores and now we're gonna test over here so it's totally sealed okay now that we made our repairs we're gonna put, uh, turn the unit on and put our gauges to see what's going on yes. that we turn it on and I'm gonna let it run for 10 15 minutes and we're gonna check pressures so this time I'm gonna use the Testo 557 and it comes with my two temperature clamps for the low and high side and we're gonna open up the valves because we're gonna zero it so let's turn it on right there and then no pressure and then we're gonna zero it right here 
press that until it, everything is zero. So that's zero, zero. If you see here the refrigerant is 410, we're gonna change it to refrigerant 22. So you press R for refrigerant, and then that's 22. Refrigerant 22, right there. And then press set. So we have R22, it's zero. There you go. And now we're gonna close the valves. We have three hoses. So now we're gonna connect all the hoses. So if you see up here on, on the uh, gauges, the blue dot uh, has the blue hose and it's gonna go to the suction line, the bigger line. And then on the right, we have the red dot on the gauges and it has a red hose. It's gonna go to the liquid line, the smaller line. And we have uh, a clamp on the liquid line and the other clamp on the suction line. So it's showing me here that I have 30 pounds of pressure in the low side and 154. So obviously it needs more refrigerant. Uh, this, uh, we're gonna go down this arrow and the temperature in the evaporator is almost eight and the condenser temperature is 84. And then the superheat is 71. And I'm pressing here, see, it goes up and down. Oh, that's the refrigerant. Sorry, and then set. And then I go with this arrow here. That's the pressure, that's the temperature in the evaporator, condenser, and then my T1 and T2. It's almost a difference of three degrees. And then one more time here, and then we have our superheat, 72 degrees, and almost three degrees of su uh, subcoating. And since this is, this unit has a piston, uh, an orifice we're gonna go and charge it based on based on superheat if the, if this unit had a thermal expansion valve then it would be super so I have my refrigerant tank or my or my yellow hose and this is closed so I'm gonna push it before I introduce because there's air in this hose I'm gonna open up this one a little bit until you hear a pssst. There you go, that's it. I'm just gonna add refrigerant. I'm not gonna go and check temperature yet because it's very low. So I'm gonna add more so, you, so it's better before I do check temperatures and uh, check superheat and target superheat. My tank is open. Now I'm gonna open up this one here and I'm gonna open my low side too. So now refrigerant is going in and then I close. It's just a little bit at a time. Now we're adding refrigerant because our pressures were very low. We had a faulty core valves and our superheat was very high. If the super su if the superheat is high, then we have to add refrigerant. If we if we had low superheat or no superheat, we would have to recover refrigerant. Now remember the superheat was 70 something, now it's 67. So we're gonna add up a little bit at a time. Open up, one, two, three, and close. The evaporator temperature is 29. So I'm just gonna get it above 32. And once, because that's the freezing point. And once I get, I get it above 32, then I go and uh, measure uh, the return temperature, the wet bulb, and then the outside temperature, uh, dry bulb, and then we do the math. Okay, so that's 33. I'm gonna leave it like that. Now I'm gonna go downstairs and get the wet bulb in the return, and then I'm gonna take the dry bulb out, outside temperature here, and then, then we do a roll on the chart and then uh, we'll get our target superheat. Remember, this is a, a piston, so we go by superheat, not supercooling. We 
had a TX GTX valve, then we'll go by some port. So I'm here at the unit. Uh, this is measuring the return. So my inside return wet temperature is 68 degrees and my outside temperature is 85 so that's about 20 degrees of target super heat let's see how much super heat we have here i have 39 so i need 20 i have to add more refrigerant okay so now we have 21 our target super heat is 1920 so that's one above so I'm gonna call it good. I have 66 uh, on the low side and 170 on the high side. Let's see the, uh, evaporator, the evaporator temperature. My delta T is 24 degrees. My evaporator coil is 38 degrees. Perfect. I like it. So now I'm gonna call it good, 21 super heat right on the dot so we're gonna call it good thank you so much for watching now remember this is uh, with the target super heat because this unit has a piston so yep I catch you later if you like this video please like and subscribe